Psalms 22. To the chief musician upon Ajath Shinar, a psalm of David. Now, Ajath is a hind of the morning. It's a title and not a musical instrument. Hind of the morning. Well, we're looking at a crucifixion song. This is about the Lord Jesus Christ. And it starts off a quote from the Bible, Matthew 27, 46, and Mark 15, 34. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? And that's what Jesus quotes on, on the cross. Why art thou so far from helping me? And from the words of my roaring. Well, because Jesus, on that point, he says that, he becomes sin personified. Sin is poured out upon him, and God's a holy God. And if God forsook Jesus with sin that Jesus took for us, what do you think he's going to do if you have sinned in your life without his son? You'll be forsaken forever into the lake of fire. Oh my God. Not OMG, it's oh my God. Countless places in the Bible. I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not. Well, he heareth, remember. Remember, yes, no, not now. This is David. Man, we even we pray ourselves, Lord, are you really listening to us? Are you really taking care of us, Lord? We've been there, we've done that. And from the words of my roar, oh, wait a minute. oh my God, I cry in the and I cry in the daytime, but thou hearest not, and in the night season, and am not silent. Day and night, David cries on the Lord, and you think he's not getting the answer. Lord answers. At that point, it's not now, or maybe a no. But thou art holy. That's why Jesus cried, my God, my God. Again, that point is when sin became into Jesus. When he took that cup. O, o thou that inhabitest the praises of Israel. Inhabit is, 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 is dwelling. God dwells with the praises that we give him. I wonder what his dwelling looks like today with the church. I want it to look like in the days of Judah, in the final days, as uh, Nebuchadnezzar came in the first time, the second time, and the third time. The third time is when they completely destroyed and leveled the temple. In 70 AD, as Titus leveled completely the temple, what was the inhabitants of the praises of Israel then? And what is it today? But oh, wait for the millennium. Our fathers trusted in thee. They trusted, and thou didst deliver them. Exodus. Judges. They cried unto thee, and were delivered. Judges. They trusted in thee, and were not confounded. God took care of them. God blessed them. God gave them the victory. Well, they fell. That's because they fell in their own sin. That's, they left God. God didn't leave them. Here is Jesus Christ again. But I am a worm. And no man. Now we can go and we can go three or four days in that study. I can tell you right now, Dr. Ruckman thinks that the worm die is not that Jesus said. Dr. Ruckman believes and if you follow the scriptures that a man in hell will be a worm. A maggot. You know, life for a baby begins as a worm of a man. And no man, a reproach of men. Men didn't want Jesus. And despise of the people. I mean, one point, yeah, Hosanna, next point, crucify him. His own family forsook him. All they that see me laugh at me to scorn on the cross. 
Matthew 27, 39 to 44. Mark 15, 29 to 32. They shoot up the lip. They shake the head. Saying. Again, this is all in the Gospels. I don't know what the shoot, shoot out the lip is. It's an expression that is not good. He trusted on the Lord. Capital L, capital O, capital R, capital D. Jehovah. Isn't that funny? It's recorded in the Psalms by the Holy Spirit and recorded by Pilate that he trusted in God. Jehovah. That he would, de that he would deliver him. Let him deliver him, seeing he delighteth in him. And he does. Not on the cross, but out of the empty tomb. And not even that point. In Acts chapter 1, when he's ascended into heaven finally. And is seated at the right hand of God. But thou art he that took me out of the womb. Find that with Jeremiah. Jeremiah chapter 1. Find that with John the Baptist. Find that with uh, Samson. Both Samson and, and John the Baptist, both the mothers were told not to do something while the baby's in the womb. Jesus Christ was called from the womb of Mary. Thou, and even uh, Jacob and, and Esau are fighting inside Rebecca's tummy. And she goes to see God, and God says, you got two nations. The one will serve the other. Thou didst make me hope when I was upon my mother's breast. That's Jesus. That's Jesus. Jesus was a baby. Yes, he was. Yes, he needed to rely on Mary, his mother. Kind of hard to picture Jesus using a diaper as God, but it was so. Don't you see where the false religions come out of this mess? You know, these gods with breasts, these gods, you know, having babies. With, that's a mess. But this is God. This is Jesus Christ. This is, a, this is God who became man and has suffered everything that man has, has suffered. You say, well, he wasn't married. What's the big difference? There's no suffering in marriage. Listen, you chose the spouse. You said I do. What's the suffrage? The Bible tells you how to, how to conduct yourselves as a husband and wife. You don't want to do what the Bible tells you to do? That's your problem. I was cast upon thee from the from the womb. Thou art my God from my mother's belly. And that you find that in Jesus, and you find that in Jeremiah chapter one. Jesus Christ was in the belly of Mary. Nine months. Be not far from me, from for trouble is near. For there is none to help. I mean, I know Peter sued the guy's ear off in the garden, but who helped? Who fought against Jesus? For him, I mean. Who was the person that said, "Don't crucify him"? You know, people say, "Oh, I would, I would like to go back on that day and, and see." Why? You would yell out, "Crucify him!" just as much as everybody else did. What? You different? You above the human race? That the entire nation cried against him? You would go in there and rescue him, you would say? Peter, James, and John and the others, the whole 11 didn't do it. Many bulls have compassed me. Strong bulls of Basha had beset me about. Ezekiel 2, 6 and Matthew 23, 33. Who are these bulls? What are these bulls of Bashan that have beset me around? Probably the religious leaders are standing there. They are mocking him. You know, the Bible likens an ox to a, to a preacher. These are bulls. 
An ox, I believe, has been castrated. I don't think a bull is. So they say that's a lot of bull. Or if you, no, no. 13. They get or gape upon me with their mouths as ravening and a roaring lion. Oh, that's an interesting little thing there. You trying to tell me Satan was there? Who do you think got the people to, to, to turn on Jesus? You better believe Satan was there at the crucifixion. Laughing. I am poured out like water. So what did John say? I forget. It's very important that you get this. There was blood and water or water and blood came out. And they say medically that is a broken heart. I've got the books. I, I, doctors are quoting to that. So if a medical doctor says that that blood and water that came out, way it came out, signifies a broken heart, that's what Jesus died of. All my bones are out of joint. Now, the Bible says not a bone of him was broken, but it does say that his bones were out of joint. The bones didn't break, but they the joint separated. Now, don't you think that was painful? I mean, when you, you, Tracy and I got the same, we I crack, and then I, it's your turn. Then she cracks, and I crack. Seems like an old age joke between us. But imagine the Lord Jesus Christ. Yea, a bone was not broken, but his his elbow was out of joint. I mean, he sat there with his arms outstretched. What about the bones in his spine? Not broken. We're going to see that in a minute about those bones. The bones didn't break, but they separated. Ouch! Put that into the beard pulling. My heart is like wax, and I wonder if that has to do with the, the breaking of the heart. It is melted in the midst of, in the midst of my bowels. Now, bowels is not... Something that you do in the toilet, my friend. That's inside. A bowl. Get the word bowl from that. See, words have changed. Words have gotten worse. 15. Jesus Christ. My strength is dried up like a pot shred. He fell under the cross. John 19.28. I have a verse here. And my tongue cleaveth to my jaws. I thirst. And thou hast brought me into the dust of death. On the cross. Look at this 16. For dogs have compassed me. Who are they? Who are the dogs? The Romans. The soldiers. They're over there casting whatever they're casting for his, for his coat. They're 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 part in his garments. They're sitting there mocking him. They're beating him. They put the thorns on his head. They're the ones that put the purple robe on him. Hollywood got it wrong. The assembly of the wicked have enclosed me. Jews. I wanted that's assembly of the Sanhedrin. G uh, the Holy Spirit doesn't play Scrabble. He uses the words properly. That's probably the Sanhedrin and the Pharisees' the assembly. They pierced my hands and my feet. Now, who is that? John 20, 25. Zechariah says that I believe, it, I believe it's Zechariah. They shall look upon whom they have pierced. And there's another prophet that says, They shall look upon the holes in my hands and say, Where'd you get those? From my, from my friends. I'm not quoting the verse properly. Watch this one. I may tell all my bones. They look and stare upon me. How can you tell my bones? Because he was so ripped to pieces that you could actually look at him and see the bones. How's that? When I cut my finger at EB with, 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 the, with the portable grinder, 
when they cleaned it up, I actually saw my bone and some and muscle strains and stuff like that. It was sickening. But I saw my bone when I, when I and that was just my finger. You know what the bones are probably here is with that kind of nine tails would be his back, the, along the ribs. Maybe a skull. Oh, look at this. Look at 18. They parted my garments among them and cast lots upon my vesture. That definitely. I'm looking for the reference here. Matthew 27, 39. Mark 15, 24. Luke 23, 34. John 19, 23, and 24. Why is it recorded five places about them shooting whatever they shot, dice, whatever it is? Why is it recorded they did that for Jesus' garments, but you can't find a place in the Bible where he was born? You've got more information about the clothes of Jesus Christ, and the fact is that he's hanging on that cross naked, no garments on him. you got more fact to that than you do when he was born. God thought it was more important about Jesus' clothes than his birthday. How's that? Shall we say birthday suit <laughs> as he hung on that cross? 19. But be not thou far from me, O Lord, O my strength. Haste thee to help me. That's David crying out in his troubles. Jesus knew on that cross that everything that happened, the Father turned his back on. He knew all that was going to ha happen. Deliver my soul from the sword, my darling from the power of the dog. Those are Gentiles. So what? John of Arimedes came up to, to uh, uh, Pilate and said, let me have the body, please. Oh, okay. Is he dead? Yeah, he's dead. Give him the body. What do you think those Romans would have done with that body if they had a chance? Thank God, God allowed that body to go in the hands of a Jew. Save me from the lion's mouth. Who is that? That's Satan. For thou hast heard me from the horns of, a, of the unicorns. Why is it when the, when the Bible says unicorns, everybody says, no, that's not true. But when they put out these stupid holly fart movies, it can be real. Why is that? Why can the Bible not say unicorns, but movies can, and it's okay for them, but it's okay not for the Bible? Evidently, David saw unicorns. I don't know. I give God the glory and honor. I will declare thy name unto my brethren. Match that with John 1. Jew. I'm trying to find a note here, but if I can get the scripture. In the midst of the congregation will I praise thee. He always gave the Father the credit. Always. Wherever he went. Ye that fear the Lord, praise him. All ye seed of Jacob, Jews, glorify him and fear him. All ye the seed of Israel. That's what Israel is supposed to do. You know what? According to this chapter, where it sits in the life of the Lord Jesus Christ, they did a complete opposite. We're not done. For he has not despised nor abhorred the affliction of the afflicted. Neither has he hid his face from him. But when he cried unto him, he heard. And God did not stop it. My God, my God, why hast thou forsaken me? God says, I hear you. And the angels in heaven, I don't know, looking at God, man, what on earth are you doing? My praise shall be of thee in the great congregation. I will pay my vows before them that fear him. 
The meat shall eat and be satisfied. They shall praise the Lord. They shall seek him. Your heart shall live forever upon the dying Savior. All the ends of the earth shall remember and turn unto the Lord. And all the kindreds of the nations shall worship before thee. Oh, Gentiles are going to get in. For the kingdom is the Lord's, and he is the governor among the nations. That's what they wanted. They didn't want a dying savior. They wanted one who's going to conquer the Romans. That's what the Maccabees tried to do. They tried to conquer the, the Romans. It didn't work. 29, for they that be fat. And that don't mean, you know, weigh 5,000 pounds. Again, that means they've got all kinds of riches. They've got all kinds of goods. They're Americans. Upon earth shall eat and worship. And all they that go down to the dust shall bow before him. Death. And none can keep alive his soul except through the Messiah, Jesus Christ. You can have all the fatness. You can have all the garages filled with junk. You can have all the storage centers filled with junk. You can have everything you want. And when you die, you die. And you don't take it. A seed shall serve him. God. It shall be accounted to the Lord for a generation. They shall come and shall declare his righteousness. Unto a people that shall be born, that he has done this. You take 31 and, march, and match that with Mark 16. Go ye in all the world and preach the gospel. Tell them what? Tell them about the, the dying Messiah. That's part of, that is part of the gospel. How Christ died according to the scriptures. And we've seen a lot of the scriptures of his death, of, of his pain. And suffering, we saw that in this chapter. That's what we're going. To, that's what we're going to go tell the world. You're found in Psalms 22. You're found to go. There's the commission right there. Christ has died in Psalms 22, and the last thing it says is go and declare. That he has done this. Done what? Died on the cross. Suffered according to the scriptures, Paul says. And then the next chapter that everybody loves and reads, the Psalms 23. And they miss Psalm 22. How interesting. Oh Lord my God. Consider all the worlds thy hands have made. I see the stars, I hear the rolling thunder, thy power throughout the universe displayed. Then sings my soul, my Savior God, to thee. How great thou art. How great thou art, then sings my soul, my Savior God to thee. How great thou art, how great thou art. And when I think that God his Son not sparing sent him to die, I scarce can take it in That on the cross My burden gladly bearing He bled and died To take away my sin Then sings my soul